All right, let's get to making something. So we're going to use Photo P of the browser for this first project. You're going to be opening up the file delivered to you through my Google Drive on Canvas. Um, so we have the background PSD file or the background file opened up, and then we are going to open a second document. So file open again, and this time get frog fly. We want the frog fly. We're actually going to be dealing with the frog fly first. Now your home base in all of these graphic editing programs is the move tool, which is represented by the letter V. And you can press V or you can use the button. Either way will take you back to the move tool. So anytime you're in the middle of doing something when you're done, just kind of go back to the move tool to kind of reset everything. If you don't have your navigator pulled up, remember you go to window to access any panels you cannot see. So if there's something you can't see, it's probably got a button for it, but if you can't find it, just go to window. Window is how we access all panels. You should have your layers panel open. We're going to be looking at that. And we're going to start off here doing something rather simple. We're going to um, remove the background on this and we're going to crop this down so that we just have a fly. We're going to put a bunch of flies on the background. So let's head to it. Let's start off by cropping. So grab your crop tool and then just draw you a little square around the fly. Now, anytime you crop, or do most things that involve handles, you're gonna to have to press this check mark button up at the top, same way in Photoshop. You can also press the enter key on your keyboard, if you like that better. Now I'm gonna take my navigator and zoom up, but you could press control plus 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 several times until you get zoomed up if you wanted to. Now let's take an eraser. So find your eraser, and if you can't find it, press the letter E on your keyboard. Now, um, the eraser is technically a brush. It's considered a brush in Photoshop and Photo P. So an eraser is a circle. So when I click on the eraser, if I come out here, I'm going to see a circle, and I can just press my mouse and click and drag, like you would think, to delete. Don't worry about the white part, really. We're going to deal with that in a minute. So I'm just going to come down here and try to get rid of this tongue. Okay, there we go. I know you're like, what's she doing? Just wait. Okay, now we're going to paint using the paintbrush tool, which is B, or come click on the paintbrush. By the way, to make your brush bigger or smaller, remember you're going to use the bracket keys to the left of the letter P, or to the right of the letter P on your keyboard. So I'm going to get this, I got to get this gray color off of this guy's head to be able to paint in the right color. So come over to your, once you've got your brush on here, come to your color picker, the top one, and then come click on the head to sample, they call it sampling, um, the head. And so there it gives us that dark color, I'm gonna hit okay. And then now I'm just gonna paint in a little body on this little guy. You can see that I am not the greatest at this. Oh, I'm making a really fat one, that's okay. Okay, so we got that in there. Then we need to go around it with a black brush to make it look like the edges. So again, this brush is going to be too big to do that. I'm going to make my brush smaller. And again, it's not a bad idea to zoom up, especially if you're me and you can't draw very well. All right, so I'm going to make my brush a little bitty first. And then I'm going to come here with my color picker and I'm going to click right in there. You want to make sure it's pretty dark black. Okay, I'm going to hit OK. And then make my brush little to kind of match what's already out there, I'm just going to go around the edge of my little dude. I'm on kind of a, like a coffee table right now. That's not the greatest thing for using a mouse on. All right, I'm probably going to have to touch up that gray. So let me click here again. I'm going to click on that gray part again. Hit OK. And kind of fix this belly a little bit. All right, now I'm zoomed up really close right now. So let's zoom out so we see. Oh, it does still look pretty awful, but... It's okay. I'll fix it a little bit more from the inside. It's not going to be perfect. They're going to be little bitty flies anyway. Okay, now we're going to use the special eraser to get rid of the white part. So if we were in Photoshop, we could use the magic eraser and then magically click on any white part and the whole white part would go away. Not going to work in Photopea though. So let's click and hold and grab the background eraser. Now, you're going to want to have a decent sized brush. Um, I'm going to make mine, I've pressed my button enough times that it's about size 25. Uh, remember, it's going to do this sampling from the brush center. So wherever the center of your brush is, when you click at that time, it's 
that color that's going to go away. Uh-oh, I was clicked on my wing. Okay, control Z one time to back up, and let's scoot that center up a bit. Okay, so keep going around the edges. You can do it faster than this. It's just that if you mess up and you do it really fast, like in one stroke, then it undoes like the whole thing. So every time you click, it creates a history moment. So if I go over here to history, see each time I click, you see how background eraser keeps going in there? Each time I click, it creates a history stick. So, you know, I want to not click too many. I, I, I'm okay with clicking extra times. Okay, see on the preview, you can kind of see, like, if there's any little dots left over. I did a pretty good job. There are a few little dots in there. And so, you know, if you see some dots and they're bothering you, switch to the regular eraser. But don't make it as big. And then just kind of, you know, out here where you can't actually see it, just kind of dig around in there a little bit. But it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. Now, if you wanted to, you could crop it down again right now, um, but now we just need to get it over to the other picture. Okay, so to get it over to the other picture, <laughs> easiest way is just to select it all and then copy and paste. So we're going to go to select all and then edit, copy, or you could probably right click and copy, but I'm on an eraser, so you can't right click and copy when you're on eraser. And then go to the other one, click on the other tab, and then edit paste and we can't use that file place because if i do file place open in place then it's going to put the whole picture in there that has the frog with the fly and all that stuff so in this case it's better to copy and paste it over okay now over here if we look on our layers we have our background and we have layer one i'm going to double click the word layer one and i'm going to name this fly because it's a fly and we do need to kind of get in the habit of naming our layers just because when you have a lot of them, it can get confusing. Now, what's home base? The move tool, so switch to it. Okay, because otherwise we're still on an eraser, and that's probably not what we need. Okay, I'm going to put this fly up here, but we're going to have multiple flies. So um, to make multiple flies, to duplicate objects, you have to be on the move tool, and you're going to hold down the Alt key. Same thing in Photoshop. So I'm going to hold down the Alt key, and while I'm pointing at this, I'm going to click and drag. I will tell you in Photoshop, your mouse changes to like a black arrow with a little white arrow over the top of it. So it's like easier to tell. Well, actually, it has like a plus sign even. It's easier to tell that you're making a copy. So here you just have to know what you're doing. So Alt and drag with the move tool. Okay, I got like five. You can have however many you want. So I've got five flies in here. And notice it automatically renamed them for me. Fly copy, fly copy two, three, four, so forth. So they've all got little names. In my history, you can see where I duplicated and moved them around. So that's all listed in my history. So we're doing pretty good here so far. Okay. Now I'm kind of working on your note sheet, kind of working across. So we started off by using the move tool, knowing that that's our home base. We duplicated our objects with that move tool, holding down the Alt key. And then now we're going to be transforming these objects. That means they're not all just going to be straight like that because that looks kind of lame and boring. So we're going to rotate them around and change the way that they look. In Photoshop, in graphic terms, we call this transforming. Transforming, that's fun. So um, there is a button in both Photopea and Photoshop for transform controls. And if you click it, it automatically puts controls on whatever layer you're currently on. So I'm on that little fly's layer, and I can transform that layer. If I want to make that fly bigger or smaller, I'm going to zoom up a little bit here then I can hold the corner. It needs to be the corner, and I can hold shift. And if I do that, then as I pull in, I can't mess it up. Okay, now what do I mean by mess it up? Let me pull from one of these. That's messing it up. See that? Not good. I'm going to hit no. Mm -mm. Back up. So if you pull from a corner and you don't hold down shift, that's what happens. If you hold down shift, this is what happens. Okay? So corner and shift now there's another way to get to transform handles rather than clicking that button although i think a lot of people just prefer to click the button in photoshop you just press Control t and that's what i do most of the time because my left hand sitting over here anyway it's easy to press Control t um whenever you are in photo p there's one additional step for control um in order to transform i thought the button said that on here but i guess it doesn't um, so anyway, that's going to be Control-Alt 
T. So you have to hold down the Alt key in Photopea. So make sure you make that note on your paper. Control Alt T will automatically then give you those handles. So Photoshop, it's Control T. Photopea, it's Control Alt T. You want to know why? Because Control T is new tab. <laughs> so when you're on a Chromebook or you're in Chrome, Control T always makes a new tab. So that's why it can't be Control T. So it's Control Alt T. Okay, and it puts it on the current layer. To make your handles go away, you got to hit your plus sign, or you got to hit either enter on your keyboard if it's on an object, or hit your check mark. You can also just double click your mouse in Photoshop and in here on the top of it. That also makes those transform handles go away. Okay, so that's how we transform. And again, hold shift and pull from the corner so you keep the scale proper. Okay, now why do we transform? So let me control out T again here. We transform for two main reasons without getting into like the fancy stuff. One of those is to scale or resize, whatever word you want to use. So we already showed you that, scale or resize. The second reason that we transform is to rotate. If you point your mouse a little farther out, you get that little arrow there, see that arrow? And I can rotate it around. And see that little dot in the middle? <laughs> That's your rotation point. So it's like there's a push pin in there and you're rotating it around that. So like if you accidentally scoot this pin over, sometimes people do that, it rotates based on wherever that pin is. So it's not like a big deal. You can scoot it back. Um, but anyway, so that's that. Okay. So that is the two main reasons that you're going to use the transform commands. Again, to accept your transformation, three ways. Enter, check mark, or double click the object with your mouse. Those are your three ways to accept a transformation. All right, also, Control Alt T, I can mirror this. So if I wanted this little guy to point the other direction while I have these handles up, and by the way, just pushing the handles isn't gonna give you those options. So if I hit Transform Controls here, this didn't change. I don't get these options. I don't have a check mark on here. And I can resize or rotate when I have that up there, but until I resize or rotate, I can't right click this, okay? So if you press Control Alt T and then right click on here, you have options for a bunch of other things. And then there's that flip horizontally. Now you don't wanna click and flip horizontal the whole thing. So I showed you in the previous lesson how we can go to transform and flip horizontally. Well, if we do that, we flip the whole thing around. Oops, so let's back that up in the history. So I'm just gonna go one above it to before it happened. And now it's back to normal. Okay, so careful about that, right? We want to make sure that we're only doing it to the object. So see how it's not doing that? I need to control Alt T. When you see the check mark, you know you're in transform mode. Right click. Okay, so I've got it flipped. Some of the other options, and let me click on a different fly. So in order to activate a layer, you have to click the layer. So this is fly, fly copy three, and I've got my transform controls on, which is sometimes nice because then when you switch layers, it lets you know which layer you're on. So it's up to you if you wanna keep those on all the time, you can. The other thing that you have the option of turning on is auto select. Now there are times when you need to turn it off because it'll mess you up when you have a ton of layers. But like right now, if I click auto select, then I can automatically click and it will automatically switch layers for me. That's pretty handy if you're doing a lot of little things like this zoomed up. So it's up to you. You either can click the layer or you can come up to auto select and then you can click these and do what you want. So I just want you to take time to remember it, between each one, you're going to have to hit a check mark. I want you to take time to try some of these other options. So again, I'm going to control alt T here. So I have my transform options. Um, one of the first ones that you don't have in here that you do have in Photoshop is called skew. I kind of like liken it to italics. It's kind of like making something italics, I guess you would say. Um, that one's only Photoshop. The rest of these are in both of these. Um, perspective, it's kind of how you can give something sort of that, like, you know, the Star Wars words are in perspective, where that part's far away and this part is close. Um, it's a little hard to use <laughs> in here, to be honest. I don't have a ton of luck with perspective in Photo P, so I don't really use that one much. Um, but distort will let you grab a hold of a corner and you can distort. See that? It moves just that corner. There we go. See? That's a distort, so that's kind of interesting. Um, 
Let me control alt T another one here. All right. And then warp. Warp gives you a bunch of little dots in here. In Photoshop, there's actually lines connecting all of these dots. And then you can move those dots and it changes your image. It's almost kind of like taffy, like it sort of stretches them out a little bit. See how it's doing? It's kind of weird. But anyway, so those are some of the different options that you have in there. To be honest, I really only, you know, use a couple of them. Um, I use rotate, I use scale, and then occasionally I'll use the um, distort one. But generally speaking, I don't use too many of those very often. Okay, let me go turn around one more of these guys. Let's scoot over here. I'm going to go do this one. Now, you can do whichever, whatever you want to any of them. So you have freedom here on that. Um, you know, make some of them bigger, some of them smaller, some of them rotated, and so forth, whatever. Remember, hold shift, pull from a corner if you are going to scale up or down. You really shouldn't scale up um, because quality will go down if you scale something bigger than it initially was. Okay, so here's my weird-looking little flies, and they all have their names, and we're good to go there. Okay, um, that's going to get us to the stopping point for this part. Um, we're going to pick up um, in session two, so we're going to go ahead and save this document. Now, we don't need to save this one, so let's come here and say, nope, I don't want to save that one. See how this has an asterisk next to the name? Same thing in Photoshop. There's going to be an asterisk there. That means it's not been saved. Um, so we're going to file, save as PSD. Now, in Photoshop, we'd say save as, and then we would tell it at the bottom to make sure it saves as PSD. So if I was in Photoshop, I'm over in Photoshop now, file save as, and then when the box comes up, I'm gonna say save as, and I have a bunch of choices. You're gonna make sure it says Photoshop PSD, okay? Now, but in PhotoP, we're gonna file save as PSD. We don't have any other choices, and then you're gonna give it a name. And I do want you, we're gonna save it after each of these sessions, just in case something happens and you lose your work. So we're gonna call this frog one, dot psd go ahead and put that on the end of it just so you know that it's saved as a psd file because it says save as adobe photoshop but we don't see that psd part and we want to make sure so type that psd in there frog1.psd and hit save now i'm not on my chromebook so if you're on a chromebook and you put it into um, your google drive into a folder make sure it's a folder for this class you should be good to go. I'm on a laptop, so I've got to go to my Google Drive file stream, and I'm saving it back into my own folder. So I'm going to hit save, and it's going to act like it's downloading it. So if you're doing this on an actual computer, which, by the way, if you're at home and you have a computer instead of your Chromebook, it's going to be faster on a computer. But anyway, but it's going to download down to the bottom because if you don't have that Google Drive file stream, it's going to put it in the downloads of your computer. So then you'd have to drag it into your Google Drive um, later on. But anyway, all right, so this is where we're going to stop for this part, and then we will pick up on part two, which is actually, I guess, part